PSO for the same start. And uh, the recent uh, European guidelines, uh, it states uh, uh, less than 80 and um, the, the threshold is 140 over 8, 90. And for more than 80 uh, years of age, the threshold is 160 over 90. And for diabetes and CKD, they also agree the BP cutoff. Uh, the threshold at which we should treat is 140 over 90. So this has been some, this has been one of the changes which we have seen in the last uh, guidelines. So what are the BP targets we want to treat? Once we know the patients are uh, hypertension, so where we want the BP to come to when we start treatment. So again, GNC7 uh, was 140 by 90 for all, but for diabetes and CKD and high risk cardiovascular uh, patients, uh, less than 130 or 80. So GNC8, uh, for more than 160 years, they want to bring the blood pressure to 150 or 90. They also give a call that if the patient's BP drops during the treatment, the blood pressure drops 140 or 90, the patient is tolerating well, do not change. Uh, let it be one less than 1490. So they are not strict that should be on less than 150. No, if it comes to 160, I will already the anti So they, they are okay if the patient is tolerating, even if the BP drops to less than 140 by 90. But less than 60 years, their uh, target is less than 140 And for diabetes, CKD, they have changed to 140 by 90. Uh, so ASH, uh, Canadian, all agree. More or less similar with the difference in the age cutoff. They all targets are less than 140 by 190, and for elderly, less than 150 over 90. The Canadian still stick to the diabetic patients to 130 over 80. Yeah. So the next question we want to answer is what medications we want to use when we diagnose a patient with hypertension. This is probably also important, uh, and then. Uh, I'll first take you through the guidelines and then subsequently give our own uh, practice what we have. So in JNC7, uh, all hypertensives with no compelling indication, they used, uh, they recommended initially all the uh, uh, thyside, ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, calcium, and other various combinations. For hypertensive with diabetes and uh, CKD, so usually they recommended uh, ACE inhibitor or ARBs uh, as a first line. JNC changes in that they do not give so much of support to the use of beta blockers. Thyside is inhibitor or uh, ARB or calcium blockers for non black and for those uh, for the black patients they prefer uh, thyside and calcium blockers. Um, irrespective of age, these are the recommendations, either more than 60 or less than 60, these are the recommendations for the JNC. For diabetes patients with proteinuria, they recommend either Thyside, AC with the ARB or calcium channel blocker. And for CKD, the protein via AC with the ARB should be the initial level of choice. Uh, this is their recommendation. ASH uh, guidelines are similar. For non black, uh, younger patients they use ACE or ARB. Uh, older patients they uh, prefer calcium channel blocker or diuretics. Of course, they still mention you can consider ACE inhibitor in this population also. Then for Canadian and the European, uh, uh, Canadian. Uh, they are okay with, for younger patients, they are okay with any, uh, any of the groups, A, B, C, B. Uh, and then the diabetic patients with no protein urea, they still are okay with any combination. But for patients with diabetes and protein urea and CKD, ACE inhibitor, ARB are recommended. Uh, European, again, they come into beta blockers uh, back in the, in the armamentary. Uh, uh, so generally, uh, most guidelines uh, are more or less except uh, some controversies in the use of beta blocker uh, and then the use of uh, ACE inhibitor ARB only or uh, can use other, other things in the diabetic and kidney disease. So what we approach here, uh, here, here is um, go by stepwise like somehow, somewhat uh, what the NICE has tried to mention. Uh, the, the patients who are elderly more than 60 years uh, I usually start them on calcium channel blockers. If the calcium channel blocker is not suitable or if you cannot tolerate because of edema or fluid overload state, uh, offer a thyside like diuretic. Just offer a uh, thyside like diuretic. Um, and then the common th calcium channel blockers we use are amblodipin, lipidipin, uh, other ones which we commonly use. Then for those patients who are younger than 60 years, uh, I usually start them on the ACE inhibitor or ARB. And then if ACE inhibitor is uh, not tolerated because of cough, uh, we offer them uh, uh, ARBs. The common examples of ACE inhibitor ARBs are enalopril, uh, lisinopril, perindopril, and for ARBs, calmisatum, losatum, valsatum, candesatum, most 
all these are available in Singapore most of them. And uh, word of question for the control of blood pressure, never use the combination of ACE and ARBs. The recent studies also have shown there is higher risk of hyperkalemia and worsening kidney function with these uh, with this combination. So uh, that's one of the things we consider. Uh, step two treatment when the blood pressure is not controlled with the first initial choice of drug. Uh, we can add the second choice. If the patients are on ACE inhibitor in the initial stick, we add the second, which is calcitonin blocker. Or if they are on calcitonin blocker, we add ACE inhibitor as a second drug to control the blood pressure to the target uh, level. Uh, for those who are not tolerant to calcitonin blockers because of uh, edema and all that, uh, a thysar diuretic can be added to ACE inhibitor. Right, yeah. And then for step three, if the BP is not controlled with step 2, I would probably first make sure the patient is adherent to the medication. Second thing I would like to increase the doses of the, the first two medicines to the optimal doses. And then the third thing I would like to uh, reassess all the lifestyle measures and make sure the patient is taking the medication regularly or the controlling his salt in the diet, uh, alcohol intake, all those things are uh, modest, moderate and then uh, smoking. Uh, all those things should be uh, address before we move to step 3. So if all those things are addressed, the doses are optimal at step 2, then the third uh, addition will be usually uh, thyroid and diuretic. And then the common one which we have is hydrochlorothiazide. Start with 12.5 and then can increase to 25 milligrams once daily. Uh, so those whose VP is not controlled with the step 3, then we move to step 4. Uh, which is resistant hypertension. Uh, uh, we define the resistant hypertension in the patient whose BP is still not controlled despite combination of optimum or best tolerated doses of the three antihypertensive drugs. Generally, ACRB plus calcium cancer plus diuretic in optimal doses. In such cases, it's preferable uh, to refer them to the uh, tertiary care center. And then, uh, while doing so, if you want to add a fourth drug to control the blood pressure, you can use either spironolactone if the patient's potassium is not high, or if the patient's potassium is high, then you, uh, go to the higher dose of the thyroid like therapy which you will There are other options to add on therapy at the step 4 level are beta blockers, alpha blockers, hydrolyzing also can be considered to be uh, added to this. So uh, one other slide before I go to the cases, when uh, you want to refer patients to uh, uh, tertiary center, uh, uh, as uh, I mentioned in the initial slides, the young hypertension less than for teachers, even if they have uh, stable hypertension, <coughs> lower risk and no target organ damage, refer them to the tertiary listing for uh, more thorough assessment of target organ damage and uh, evaluating the secondary causes of hypertension. Then refer the person to specialist in the same day if they have severe hypertension or if they have accelerated or malignant phase hypertension or if any of the features of hypertensive crisis if they have uh, impending TIAs, heart failure, uh, ischemic cardiac uh, symptoms, all that. Consider the need for specialist investigation if patient has signs or symptoms or uh, the basic investigations suggesting the secondary cause of hypertension. And uh, of course, just now I mentioned resistant or difficult to manage hypertension. And patients with therapeutic problems, also we can uh, refer to the uh, centers like those patients who have multiple drug uh, intolerances, multiple drug contraindications, or persistent non-adherence, all that. And uh, of course, patients with like pregnancy, possible white coat hypertension, mast hypertension, uh, is referred in the hospitals. So with this, I'll quickly take you to the case scenarios. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, I'll probably go on telling what we'll be doing in these uh, cases. So suppose we have a Madam M uh, who checks her own blood pressure at home and it's 150 over 90. And she has no past medical history, non-smoker, uh, she's just a social alcohol drink. Uh, her first BP was 158 over 74. BP is no significant difference between the arms. Second BP, we check the second BP then, it's 154 over 90. And then the third BP 148 or 90. So we take the average of the last two or the lower one. So she does she have hypertension? What do you do next? So uh, either you call her the second time and then measure her blood pressure again to have two visits, uh, or you offer her uh, ambulatory blood pressure home BP monitoring. The ABPM result, she will offer ABPM. Her ABPM results show she has daytime average BP more than 145, 90. The 24 average 130 or 88, and the nighttime 130 or 86, which is above the cutoff for the. Hypertension diagnosis. So, uh, uh, 
so the our conclusion sheet has page on hypertension. So then you advise lifestyle changes, then answer these questions. Which, what is the cause of a hypertension? Does she have a target on damage? What is the 10-year cardiovascular risk? Okay. Right, then uh, she has no evidence of secondary hypertension. I mean, uh, after evaluating, we find no evidence of secondary hypertension. Her target organ damage assessment means she has LVH on the ECG. Her uh, calculated 10 year risk comes to less than 40%. So, what will we do next? So, does she need anti So, next question we answer is does she need anti hypertension treatment or not? So, patients who have stage 1 hypertension with low CV risk and no evidence of target organ damage, you can manage them on lifestyle measures and then call them, call them in uh, 3 months and then check the blood pressure again. But because this patient had LVH, so she should be offered drug treatment. Then, the next question is what is the drug of choice? So young hypertensive usually AC inhibitor or ARB. But I just uh, put another caveat here. If the patient says she is pregnant or she is planning for pregnancy, we can't follow the same guidelines for every patient. So we have to consider both the unborn baby and uh, mother in this case. So the choice of uh, drug may not be AC inhibitor, will not be AC inhibitor or ARB here. So it will be methyl dopa or the methyl LA, uh, which account will be safer in these patients. So coming to case scenario two, Madam D. Uh, 81 year old lady with history of dyslipidemia, uh, seen in clinic for DNS, her BP was 174 over 100, and that's the average of the second and third readings. Uh, she was offered APP results, also expired 570 over 96. Does she have hypertension? So there's no doubt, she has hypertension. So what we do next? So always assess the target organ damage. She has found here LVH and ECG. Her 10 year cardiovascular risk was more than, 80, uh, more than 20% because of dyslipidemia, age, as well as the higher blood pressure numbers. So does she need anti hypertension? Drug treatment, yes, she will need because she has stage 2 hypertension with high CV risk and uh, evidence of target organ damage. So, what is the initial drug of choice? Elderly, more than 80 years old. So, uh, uh, we start on amlodipine and then follow up for all the hypertensive patients. When the BP is not controlled, call them every monthly until the BP is controlled. Once the BP is well controlled, you can uh, you can call you can check the blood pressure during the next scheduled visit for any other reason or if they have no other problems, only blood pressure which is well controlled, you can call them annually also is okay. To, uh, to monitor the blood pressure. Okay, so she was called in four weeks, her BP was still high, 164.92. So what would we do next? And then what's our target BP? Her age is 81, so we, our target is usually 150, less than 150 over 90 in her case. So step two treatment has to be added because the blood pressure is still high. So I'll add ACE inhibitor or ARP. So tell me something 40 milligram to AM was added. So uh, she was called to clinic again in four weeks. Her BP was still 158.92. Because we started AC inhibitor ARP according to protocols, uh, we should normally check the creatinine and potassium to make sure the, uh, they, uh, she doesn't suffer from side effects from the AC inhibitor ARP. So the BP is 158.92. So what do we do next? So when, before going to step three, we have to optimize the medication because the dose is still not, not optimal. So I increase the dose of tenbisatum to 80 milligram, which is the standard recommended highest dose for tenbisatum. Most most uh, uh, national guidelines believe 80 milligrams is higher. Then the amlodipine is still on 5 million, we can continue. Call her to play in five, uh, 4 weeks again, a month again. The BP is still high, then you increase the amlodipine to 10 milligrams and then check the blood pressure. So now her BP comes to 146.84, which is probably okay with the new guidelines. One, less than 150 is good. So she will be maintained on 10 and uh, 10 million amlodipine and 10 is on 80 milligrams. So last scenario, uh, Mr. D, 53 year old man, whose clinic BP is 176 over 108. Showed LVH, average uh, ambulatory blood pressure was 158 over 98. So his diagnosis stage to blood pressure with target organ damage. What would you, would you do? So he's a young, younger than 60 years. I'll add in tamisatan or the base or ARBs. So I started on tamisatan, increased to 80 milligrams in the next visit. And then after he comes back, his BP was still high, 160 over 100. Uh, added <coughs> calcium channel blockers and then increased to 10 milligrams, the highest dose. BP is persistently high. So uh, go to step 3, add hydrochloric in this case, 12.5, increase to 25 in the next visit. So when he comes back, after this, this BP remains 150 over 90. So this patient is uh, somebody like a resistant hypertension. So this one should uh, recommend to refer to the specialist center for further management. So uh, to summarize, uh, all patients with hypertension, just answer these uh, 7 or 8 questions which I have written. That should be uh, that should uh, help us evaluate all the patients and treat the patients uh, 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 So, ask reservation of hypertension. What is the qualified cause of hypertension? Uh, is it essential or secondary? Does he have a target organ damage? What is his 10 year cardiovascular risk? And then, once we have this, then ask what does he need anti hypertension drug treatment? 
you so what drug to start you on, and then what should be the target we can treat based on the guidelines that's now mentioned, and then what's the monitoring and follow-up treatment. So, as I mentioned, we, well, the BP is not controlled for them every four weekly, and the optimized medication. Once the BP is well controlled, uh, during every visit for any reason, we can check the With this, uh, uh,